This is the Armory. It's a studio in Vancouver, uh, right off the Burrard Street Bridge. There's lots of bands have worked here. Uh, everybody from ACDC and Aerosmith and Van Halen to, uh, you know, gosh, really everybody. It's like, it's, it's kind of was, uh, and still is, uh, the biggest A room in, in Vancouver. That's a tracking room out there, and that's where uh, we'll be doing all the recording of it. That's where Gene and uh, Jed and uh, myself and Dave will be set up. Byron is uh, still in, on tour with a Fear Factory, but he's going to be getting back, I think, on the 24th. It's the 20th today, so the 19th today. So we're all kind of uh, putting this one together in a very strange way, but it's, man, this record's going to just fucking kill. Jesus. It's so good to, like, kind of embrace the inner freak that I think we all are. On this record, Dev and I holed up for about six months and just wrote songs every day and played every single day pretty much for the last six months and uh, we got to the point where it's time to record. This is the tape room, the obsolete tape room thing. No one in their right mind uses that shit anymore. And here was our last track sheet from the last record, what do you know? These are the names of the songs. These are open from the beginning and uh, under each column there's your drum column, guitar, bass, keyboards, vocals, background additional thing and mix. Once each section of the uh, of the record is done, whoever is part of it gets to check off their box. Like if you notice here, Gene on the last record made Little Daddy O's. Be the uh, pseudonym for the Gene Hogo in there. Uh, Jed's got the uh, Satanic Daffy Duck. Saying Fack Off, which pretty much sums him up there. Byron was the uh, wizard. Big bearded wizard dude holding the crystal ball. Keyboard player is always all arbitrary. And I, of course, am Kermit. You should come see the new card for this record. Here's the empty chart for the uh, new record. No name for the record yet, but uh, this time we'll try to make it a little more concise, a little less autistic. Up here we've got that instead of drums, see? Just the D, the G. That's how the cool cast say it. There's a new song, temporary song title. Usually ends up just being a one word name. Because by the end of it, you end up just calling it by whatever it is. Doing a cover version of What's New Pussycat by Tom Jones. So we call it Pussycat. I am stoked. Big sound. <laughs> Sounds wicked in here. It's totally awesome. And you know, their armory where we're at is. Uh, you know, it's one of the coolest studios in the world, you know, tons of stuff is, has been recorded here. Everything you've ever heard, kids. So, uh, it's great studio, great vibe, it's totally awesome and we're having a great time. It makes, it makes recording so non-stress filled, you know, like completely stress free to be here and this is kind of our home away from home kind of, so, we're rocking. as opposed to stressing about the job, right? Just like make it a, like a party, basically. Right? High tech, that's exactly what he is, he's the high tech. We know who didn't clean the bomb. <laughs> Bust your rocks. Like everybody should come into the studio going, man, we're gonna fuck, just fuck shit up, right? And at the end of the day, you know, we're gonna have creative product out of it that we can be proud of that really says this in a lot of ways. And I think ultimately that's what this band is about. It's just like, man, look at this Wicked Studio. Look at all this great gear. Let's abuse it. You know what I mean? Let's like take that strip that you know, you're not supposed to make go red and make it go fucking crimson. You know what I mean? Like just, because there's going to be a sound that comes from abusing things that is like a traffic accident. You know what I mean? As you're driving by, you're like, boy, those people are really fucked. You know what I mean? And it's produced well enough that you can really hear how fucked they are. And this record is going to be really fucked. All the way. I kind of handle a lot of the tactical end of it and uh, make sure everything's running smoothly. And uh, uh, he's the boss. This is where it's at. This is, you know, this is uh, probably the coolest band in, uh, in Canada, if not maybe North America or the world. These are the records that you look forward to. Is the, these ones because they're uh, they're so much fun. Everybody's really good at what they do, and the uh, end product product is always exciting. So, like all of these mics right here will definitely be used for me. Those so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, at least thirteen, and I know there's going to be 
probably, you know, six more. I think we mic'd up 19 on the last last time, so. Mm -hmm. We're, we've got, you know, I don't know, 30 some mics or whatever we've, you know, four, 30 on, you know, among everything out there. And uh, what we're gonna try and do is uh, 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 blend those down into a, a reasonable number, maybe 12-ish uh, track-wise, and uh, um, uh, get some pretty solid drum sounds happening. And then uh, afterwards, we'll uh, overdub everything else. We all sit here in our room. Uh, this is my little area, for instance, and uh, I have my headphones with, and I have the kick drum, the snare drum, a couple of guitars and the keyboards. We just have our own mix, and we jam live in the room. Of course, our amps are in other rooms and stuff. And, uh, and uh, we just jam the songs out, and uh, Gene lays down his drum tracks. And when, when that's done, and, and uh, we're satisfied with, with what he's done, and he's satisfied with what he's done, then we move on to somewhere else to do the rest of it. Sean sits in here with uh, Rob and Christina and the other people, and Brian, who's taking care of like the uh, technical aspects of it. And they oversee that all the recording levels and all the microphones are sounding fine. There's no distortion. You know, everything is sounding consistent. The levels are going to tape or like they're all like both the overhead mics are the same volume and the compression is equal and all the technical things, the phasing of the microphones, it's like making sure everything is working right. Their job is to maintain that so we don't have to think about it. So when we're in there performing, we have a click track, which is like a constant signal that signifies to us where the beat is, and it changes according to the song. We have a program to move within the song. We listen to that, perform the song the best of our ability, trying to get into the best headspace, and we come back in here, and by that time, uh, Sean and everybody else has backed up the session, so there's no risk of losing it. And the whole works, it's like, above and beyond the technology and the humanity of it, that you gotta have a good group of people and a good group of people, friends around you that you can trust. Oh, with strapping, what we're serious about is intensity. Uh, delivering our message, whatever message that may be, with the utmost, you know what I mean? And uh, I think we excel at that. And uh, I think because we know each other so well and we're so tight as brothers and, and, and all those good things that can happen to a group of people, it all gels into one thing that makes us rule. That is fucking wicked! It's my job to get eyes a popping and jaws a dropping. So it's my job to be amazing everything I do. That's what I aspire to do. Um, smoke you, blow you away, and uh, make you make you go, damn, I gotta start over again. That's pretty much what I try to do. So um, that's my mental preparation. Crush all the time. You know, make your make this latest thing cooler than anything else you've done. And you know, amaze your bandmates more than everybody else, you know. When I see Jed watching some of the new stuff, just going, damn. Yeah, you know, I know I'm doing something right, you know, because Jed, we played together for you know, eight years now, so. When you can amaze your bandmates, then you're rocking. Uh, they were looking for someone to play on the new album, so uh, Dev asked me to, if I could do keyboards for this rapping album. So. Keyboards make the songs just like, that much more, uh, more insane, like, if you get like keyboard lines falling, guitar parts, and, and uh, big pads, and crazy samples, it's just like uh, so so much more heavy, I guess sinister, uh, making them sound evil. As far as uh, hazing and stuff goes, I, I haven't had anything bad happen to me yet. So. But I'm, I'm only playing the album, like I'm not uh, actually in the band. I, I want to make it like I'm, I'm a human Pro Tool machine. I am a human drum machine that like, there is going to be, you know, there's always, every album I've done, there's always the odd little kick drum thing that, you know, it's like the trigger didn't fire, or I kind of fluff that tiny little spot, so we fix that sort of stuff. But, like, I'm sure it's, it's evident in some of the playbacks and watching this stuff, you know, I'm nailing everything on this record, and that's just, it's, that's quality, you know? It's like, you, you just, I, I refuse to kind of get, get close and then, go, ah, oh, hell, we'll fix it in the mix, you know, because that's, that's just not the way to do it, you know. Right now, it's, we, you've got to, your drummer has to be killer, and I try to be, you know, as killer as I can be, and I'm really proud of myself on this one, you know, because this is slamming stuff. We're just massive music 
you know, this, we're listening back to some of the, like, scratch tracks that we have, and I'm just thinking that, you know, I know there'd be a lot of bands that'd be giving their left nut to have the scratch tracks that we have as their final, wah, you know, and we haven't even started, man, we haven't even scratched the surface, anything like, any, like, say, if you're in there filming the, you know, like, inside the control room as we're listening back or whatever, it's like, that is like, that much of the stuff that we're going to put on and the stuff we're going to put on is going to be the size of this room. And so it's just complete cosmic enormity of, of chaos and music and, and glory. This whole album is so glorious sounding that it's... I don't even give a shit if you like it or not. Man. Fuck you if you don't. But I love it. Hey, rock and roll, we are officially recording the drum tracks. Okay. Take two. Hey, rock and roll, we are officially recording... Done. Re Done. Hey, take two. Three. Uh... Oh boy, look at this. All right. <laughs> we are finished officially, officially recording, recording the drum tracks, tracks for the new record. Hi, hey, folks. Welcome to Greenhouse. Come on in. I was just refreshing my coffee, because you gotta have it. Can't make music without coffee. Come on in, I'll take you to Strapping Headquarters. Oh, and my name's Jed, I'll be your brief tour guide. Just entering the, uh, call it the common area, this is where you come to hang out, watch some TV, whatever. Uh, see all the records and stuff on the walls, bands have recorded here. One of my favorites right over here. Here, you see the little KD, your little Nickelback. Yeah, it's all fun. Surrounded by studios, they're everywhere. Upstairs, over here, in every room there's a studio. A lot of different people come here to work and play. If we listen close, you might be able to hear a little something going on. Of course, they stop right when we want them to, so let's continue down this darkened hallway. And of course, being the uh, rebels that we are, we're in the back of the bus. If we listen, we can hear Byron tuning his bass. He's doing his tracks right now. I'm going to enter the secret code. Nine star. Green light means come on in. Let's go. All right, I'll just let you uh, take it from here. Townsend doing his work, making sure everything is synced up, laying down some samples, some keyboards. We call this area Townsend Central. It's good fun. What we did at the Armory was we recorded the drums, which are the final takes, Gene's performances, but over top of that, just so we'd have reference to know where we stood for the rest of the recording, I recorded a rough guitar track, Jed recorded a rough guitar track, Dave recorded some keyboard tracks. It was inconsistent as to what happens on each track, but there was always a reference as to where you are in the song and according to the drums. And uh, those tracks we bring here as a reference for us to put down the real instruments like the bass, the guitar and keyboards for the final takes. But with Gene's instruments, that's, that's it. That's what we use. So. I wasn't in the studio when we were doing drum tracks because I was still on tour with Gear Factory. Um, you know, I, I was bummed that I missed those first few days. I really wanted to be there. I was calling Devin every day just to get, like, just to so I know what was going on, you know. Well, the first thing we did was we set up for guitars, and it took about a week and a half, two weeks from Jed and I to work through the guitars. As we're doing bass, um, when Dev doesn't need to be with me, he'll he's doing all the samples and keyboards and getting that stuff all together. And uh, I think after we do bass, let's have a look at the chart. I think we'll be starting uh, some, I don't know, some keys, maybe some vocals. I think by you know by the end of the week, we'll probably be doing some vocals in here, and that'll be that'll be great. And then we just piece it all together, you know, fit in all the keyboard samples, vocals. Background vocals, I think we're gonna have some choir, like some kids come in and some, some female vocals and some big gang vocals with all our friends, you know, and uh, getting them to be a part of the record because we, we like to do that. We did that in the last record too. We had a, all our friends come down and just make everybody a part of it, you know. In this part of the room here, we've got uh, where I do the samples and keyboards and where I'll be tracking uh, 
the uh, gang vocals and the kids vocals and we got some like horns and violins and things coming in right so we'll do that all on the floor down there where the majority of the activity is going on set up a couple of stereo mics on either side of the room there and put a whole bunch of you know buddies down there and just get them to yell out words and phrases and melodies and things like that and then up here I kind of in the mouth of position get to uh, uh, sit up here and uh, do samples and keyboards and everything. This song's this song's about having babies. So possession is a song about uh, like uh, whether or not to have kids. And so we got uh, we got the big uh, heavy metal orgasm going on that results in kids saying mommy and daddy. <laughs> so we figured we'd find as many of them as we could and chuck them on there. Needs to be a heavy metal song about babies and pregnancy, right? Even though we have all this technology, it still um, still takes a long time to get everything the way we want it. Because now that we have the technology, we spend even more time to perfect it. You know, so it definitely does still take lots of time. After we're done recording in this room, uh, Sean will be taking it to Green Jacket Studios in Richmond, which is Greg Reilly's studio, and he'll be mixing it there and mastering it there as well. Greg's does some killer stuff. He did the last Fear Factory record there. He mixed it there, and he did uh, Devil Driver, and he's done a few other projects there. So it's just, uh, it's just, you know, there's lots of gear there, basically. It's got everything you need to do the mix. We've moved, we were Greenhouse doing guitars and bass, and here we're continuing at my studio, The Chunk, and uh, uh, this is vocals, keyboards, and, and, and uh, extraneous mix things. There are a lot of vocals uh, that we've been laying down, but uh, it comes together in such a way that it's just like, it's almost overwhelming to listen to, but it's unique. Definitely very unique and powerful. For this particular record, it's like, man, there's really not a lot to, to prove anymore. It's like we've got a, a certain following and, you know, we've toured enough that there are going to be people that are going to buy our record, you know, regardless of whatever. So with that fan base, we figure as opposed to trying to get to mass attention and try and really make something that a lot of people can like, let's just take the opposite and just like, like rape and abuse technology and just make something that people want to turn off. But it's going to be so intense and talented that it's going to be, if you do choose to listen to it, you're going to realize that it's solid from beginning to end and all the way through, but uh, for the layman I think it's really going to be terrifying. I really can't wait to do that. Maybe not even on a thematic way, but just in terms of just like, just like sonically, it's just going to be like, oh god, like, oh, I don't want to hear that. There's a guy screaming and the drummer's going like this, but it all makes sense in some way. And... Oh yeah. I think this record's going to be the best record we've ever done. I mean, everybody's at a place right now that where we're totally confident and uh, we know what we want. What I hear, I, I'm loving it, and uh, you know, my life is going great, and I'm just happy to be here. It's all good. I can have this guitar and my big amp and come into a studio and go, you know, like, fuck, how cool is that, you know? So I don't complain too much. Laying down keyboards and actually hearing all the uh, all the intricacies of vocals and stuff that went into it was a really amazing experience, and uh, it's one of the, the most incredible albums I've ever heard. So, again, I just I just don't speak my mind, but you know I have a, this forum that I can really, really, really say it. You know what I mean? And it's like, and it seems to be that I have carte blanche. So I mean, with that in mind, you know, like. Man, I feel really energetic and I've actually never been more primed. I've never been more primed to do a record than this one. So it's like it's going to be really interesting to see what turns out at the end of it because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of craziness that goes on during the making of it. And I also think that there's going to be some really, really heavy reactions to it at the end because it's coming from a place that is really, excuse me, okay, joke out. It's coming from a place that's really pure, I think. You know what I mean? It's like it's been a real shitty year, so it's like, you know, fuck.
Give me a mic.